Hi, my name is Kyle Riley, and I work for a company called Hema Consulting. And what we do is we create working economic models for companies with new healthcare technologies. Uh, and the company in question today, Team CarePal, has developed a great app that helps support caregivers by connecting them with resources, both in the healthcare system and independent organizations, connecting them with other caregivers, connecting them with various supports, including mental health supports and financial supports, and keeping them in touch and connected with uh, their core caregiving support network in general. And so what we're gonna look at today is the economic model that I created, which attempts to demonstrate and show the value that Team CarePal is trying to apply. So the model seeks to quantify potential health benefits and cost savings to various stakeholders and payers. In this case, the uh, stakeholders that I would think about are the caregivers themselves, the health system in question, and employers of, uh, of caregivers. And the, my methods are based on cost-effectiveness methods used in health technology assessment. Uh, I go through the trouble of adding additional outcomes above and beyond what we'd normally look at in a health technology assessment. And that's uh, in order to capture some of that value that goes to stakeholders like the employer and the caregiver themselves. Uh, whereas classic HTA assessments really only look at the value to the, the health care system. Um, so I consider this an expanded HTA model. Uh, because we don't have any information on uh, results from Team CarePal yet, because it's, it's an early technology, this model uses existing research to pr parameterize the values. Um, but of course can be updated uh, once we start bringing in uh, data for Team CarePal itself. And the way that the model works overall is it finds the total headroom for caregivers in terms of cost and reduced health and makes reasonable assumptions about Team CarePal's ability to alleviate them. So essentially what we're looking at is where are things right now? Where are things starting? And we're gonna look at how good could it possibly be if, if things were perfect, and then in between that, we find a reasonable case study that shows how Team CarePal can move us towards that headroom or move us towards that, that kind of perfect outcome. And here's just a quick example of how the model works. Uh, there are quite a few different pathways on the decision tree, and, and this is just one of them, but it's illustrative of what the model's doing. Um, and so if you look at the far left where it says caregiver over the age of 14, this is the start of the model and it's the total population. And so you can see in the top box, one, 100% of the people in the model are currently in that box. And starting with the total Alberta population, I estimate that there'd be about 1,040,000 caregivers in Alberta in any given year. And then moving through, we see the probability of a caregiver being male or female in the initial model is 50%. In this case, uh, the caregiver is female. And so there's 520,000 of those. This particular caregiver is also between the ages of 50 and 64 and provides more than 20 hours of caregiving a week. And so now from the total population, we're down to about 43,000 caregivers in Alberta a year that fall into this uh, category. And I would describe this as, as one of the higher risk groups of caregivers, uh, both because of their age uh, of being a little bit older between 50 and 64, uh, also, you know, females have a slightly uh, lower health state than males to begin with, and also do spend more hours caregiving. And, uh, and you know, the big reason that this is a high risk group of caregivers is that they provide 20 plus weeks of care, uh, which is which is a lot. And, you know, when you look at the effect of caregiving on a person's health and, and economics, the hours of caregiving is is absolutely essential. And 20 plus hours is considered the highest category. This caregiver is also employed full-time, um, and this particular caregiver, as a result of their caregiving, has unfortunately had to reduce their, their weekly work hours. And uh, just looking at the far right of this model, you can see that out of the total population of just over a million caregivers that I started with, uh, 4,337 would fall into this specific category. And then the bottom uh, part shows just some of the outcomes that would flow from this model here. And, uh, you know, there's caregiver reported stress, caregiver reported health loss, caregiver burnout, uh, coronary heart disease. I added mortality to the model. Um, the model does not assume 
that team Carapal can affect mortality, uh, which is is a conservative assumption. You know, in a large enough population, a technology like this could have an effect on mortality. Um, but I just I just wanted to keep it constant for the purposes of this model. Uh, but I did need to add it because, you know, obviously if a caregiver experiences mortality, that's going to affect their health care costs, their ability to care, everything like that. And then the uh, the far right side of that, the caregiver health utility is the, the most complicated equation in the model, um, but does work out to be that this particular caregiver has 81 qualities in this year. Um, so that would be a little bit below what we would expect uh, a normal person that age would have a quality quality adjusted life years of about decimal eight six and so this does show that you know because this person's adding 20 plus hours of care a week uh their health state has suffered significantly and you know the total amount of qualities lost in this model is 3500 um and so it's it's kind of thinking of a population of a million is losing about 3000 500 years in terms of quality of life in this uh, in this model. And so then looking at the model results more generally, instead of just following one branch, but kind of following the summation of, of all the model results for all the different demographics of caregivers, um, I've applied a reasonable scenario to Team CarePal, uh, just based on a, on a couple different papers that show the ability of uh, better supports for caregivers to reduce stress, the ability of a reduction in stress to reduce, uh, you know, the reduction in employment, and also based on uh, another paper that shows the ability of uh, supports for caregivers to reduce long-term care. So, so what I did is I found some other literature that shows similar type technologies and programs, and how much potential they have to improve caregiver health and well-being and then just apply these to the model in, in a reasonable way. The results here reflect costs and benefits over a one year period. Um, you know, this is a decision tree model that just looks at one year and can be applied year over year, but as a baseline model, I think it's it's fair to look at it as just what would happen over a one year period if Team CarePal was given to these caregivers. The costs in the model are Canadian dollars and inflated to 2022. And uh, health benefits are measured in quality adjusted life years and valued at $50,000 uh, as per the, the kind of Cadith suggestion for what the value of a quality ought to be. Um, and of course, the full model explanation, calculations, and research are all contained in the full report. Um, health economic model of Team CarePal in the support of caregivers and their loved ones. I, I think there's over 100 parameters and, and probably about 200 calculations, uh, but I really encourage you if you're interested and if you want to evaluate this more, please look at the full report and uh, please feel free to contact Team CarePal or myself uh, with any questions or with any, any advice or any interest. So looking first at a case study of, uh, you know, if we if we took Team CarePal and applied it to a mid-sized company, what would we expect the results to be? And so this specific company is uh, is just made up in my head, but represents kind of an average kind of mid to maybe starting to get large company in Alberta. Uh, this particular company has 500 employees. The average employee age is 45 and 60% of the employees are female. So this, this could be quite a lot of companies in Alberta. Um, and if you were to apply Team CarePal to this company, uh, given the assumptions that I've modeled, 26 fewer of those 500 employees will experience significant stress due to caregiving, and 18 fewer employees will experience a health loss. Additionally, the health system saves $6,429 in caregiver health costs, and $72,676 in long-term care costs. So this is resulting from having less stress, uh, also reduces the healthcare costs in general. It reduces the number of doctor's visits a caregiver will have. It reduces the number of hospitalizations a caregiver will have. And because the caregiver is better supported, they're more likely to continue in care and continue to be able to care for, for their relative or partner or friend um, and, and avoid that person being admitted to long-term care. And long-term care is, is an incredibly expensive cost. I consider it a, a top-line healthcare cost uh, indisputably. So any small reduction in, in admission to long-term care can lead to large systemic cost savings. 
And, uh, you know, those are just the cost savings. There's also the benefit of additional qualities that these employees are receive, uh, receiving by being less stressed out and, you know, being able to work, not losing their employment. And that gain is worth $103,280. Now, looking at the employer's perspective, the average employee can gain over 11,000 hours of work. Uh, that would have been missed due to caregiving, or sorry, not the average employee. In in total of these 500 employees, they would gain 11,161 hours of work, um, and that's worth you know 563 thousand uh, dollars. Either that's wages to the employee, that's value to the company, uh, that's you know insurance avoidance. But there there's a lot of value in specifically saving caregivers from losing employment, from reducing their hours, from missing days. Um, and in fact, it's, it's indisputably the largest economic driver of this is that if caregivers were better supported in Alberta, uh, they would make significantly higher wages. And, and that has a number of good knock-on effects. You know, that's more money for the employee, that's more productivity for the employer, and that's more tax dollars for the government that they could spend on health care. So it's, it's quite a big gain uh, looking at employment. Taking the same idea, um, I also wanted to look at a case study of how this would look applying Team CarePal to a caregiver support organization. Um, and so a way to think about it is that, you know, say Caregivers Alberta decides, yep, we're going to buy Team CarePal and we're going to give it to a thousand caregivers in Alberta. What can we expect the outcomes to look like if, if we do that? And so in terms of this scenario, 118 fewer caregivers will experience significant stress and 80 fewer will claim a, a health loss as a result of caregiving. Additionally, the health system saves $29,435 in caregiver health costs and, uh, and a significant $332,767 in long-term care costs for the carry. And in this case, the quality adjusted life year gain is worth $517,000 roughly. And again, looking at, at work hours, which, you know, even this isn't a, applied to a company in and of itself, it's just applied to caregivers in general. A lot of caregivers are employed uh, and, and struggle with that balance. And so it still has a very significant effect. Um, the caregivers would gain 43,965 hours of work. And, you know, that's worth over $2.5 million uh, annually in, in average wages. And so then kind of taking this idea and bringing it up to the Alberta wide level, you know, looking at the entire population of Alberta and that just over, you know, a million of them are caregivers. If, uh, if you know, the greatest thing were to happen in Team CarePal was just given to all Albertans who are caregivers, what would the effect of that look like on a, on a provincial level and how would that affect the provincial economy? And looking at the graphs here, you can see that over 123 thousand fewer Albertans would be experiencing stress due to caregiving. And now that we're looking at a bigger population, uh, we can even see differences in, in very severe uh, health diagnoses. And in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that my model actually predicts that coronary heart disease diagnoses would be reduced by 114 uh, annual in Alberta, which is, is a significant, very real health effect um, for this population. This is an additional 10,762 qualities for caregivers. Um, so one way to look at this is in Alberta, this would be like adding over 10,000 years of life to everybody. That could be actual life due to, you know, like, as I say, fewer diagnoses of coronary heart disease, uh, but that really should be think, thought of as, as the quality of life improvement is worth about 10,000 years in this scenario. And, you know, applying that $50,000 per quality value to it, it's worth more than $538 million uh, a year for Albertans. And then, of course, uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the significant gains in employment in terms of hours worked and, and jobs maintained. And indeed, uh, a lot of caregivers say that they're unable to work um, and would if they, if they weren't caregiving. So taking, again, the... the uh, reasonable assumptions that I've applied to get this scenario and looking at it on an Alberta-wide level, 45.7 million hours a year could be gained uh, by increasing the support to caregivers through Team CarePal. That's, you know, over 14,000 fewer cases of caregivers losing their employment. And it's, it's almost 40,000 Albertans 
that are able to work that otherwise wouldn't be able to. And so, you know, obviously this is a, a huge economic benefit and looking in the lower chart there shows that this increase is worth more than 2.6 billion in wages for caregivers in the Alberta economy. And again, this isn't, this is kind of shared between everybody. You know, the, the companies get this additional productivity, the employees get these additional wages, insurance companies don't have to spend the additional money and governments get the additional taxes. So this is really a huge economic win uh, for my team, CarePal. And also, you know, there, there are cost savings and there are resource savings in the healthcare system that are significant. Uh, we're looking at over 1,400 fewer hospitalizations, uh, which is, you know, obviously a significant uh, reduction and, and could improve uh, very much the capacity of the healthcare system. 1,222 fewer doctors visits by caregivers, 3,811 fewer admissions to long-term care and that that is a hugely significant cost my estimate of, of an annual cost for long-term care is more than eighty thousand dollars a year and so this drives significant uh, health cost system savings um, really enough to enough to dwarf the other savings this is a, a really huge effect and a huge potential for team care pal uh, and definitely something that that should be explored um, you know looking at the total health care cost savings it's over 377 million in savings for the Alberta health system a year. And again, that's due to fewer expenditures on health uh, costs by the caregiver themselves. And then very significantly that fewer people would be admitted to long-term care. And then just kind of rounding up and looking, you know, for the Alberta economy, what is the potential value for team, my team CarePal to improve the experience of caregivers and, you know, reduce costs in the healthcare system and, you know, uh, just increase kind of economic value in terms of, of wages and employment, um, it, it adds up significantly. So you can see the three uh, bars that I have here. They show the headroom on the right-hand side and the baseline on the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side, nothing happens. There's no cost savings, and so we have a value of zero dollars there. And you can see on the right-hand side, you know, if if uh, all of the problems kind of caused by caregiving just magically ceased to exist, um, there's significant value. There's almost $9 billion of value if we could make caregivers' lives uh, the same as, as other people's lives, if we could utterly improve things for them. Um, but you know what? You can you can do pretty good with, uh, with Team CarePal app as well, because I see $377 million in health cost savings, $538 million in uh, health gains, and 2.6 billion in additional wages. Um, this has the potential to add more than $3.5 billion to Alberta's economy in economic value annually. And so there is, is significant headroom. There is significant ability of, a, of an app like Team CarePal to affect the uh, well-being of caregivers and increase economic value. Um, and it, it's, it's something that should be pursued based on these results. And so, you know, thinking of the kind of pricing of Team CarePal and the value of Team CarePal, uh, these values assume that long-term care costs are split evenly between individuals and the health system and that earnings are taxed at 30%. And it's just kind of to be able to attribute, look, depending on who is, is purchasing this, whether it's the government for the health system, whether it's individuals for themselves, whether it's employers for their employees, this allows us to kind of distribute the value and, and look at it in different scenarios. So the total value, or I'd say the total economic value per user of Team CarePal is $3,389 per year. And splitting that between the different potential payers gives us $1,449 for the health system, $1,916 for the caregiver, and 2,509 for the employer. And this is actually just per person. So looking at this, you know, this is if everybody had access to the Team CarePal app. Not everybody is a caregiver. And so this 3,389 is, is lower because it applies to the whole population of Alberta. If you're looking on it on a per caregiver basis, it's actually even higher. So this, this model assumes that you give the app to everybody and that if they become a caregiver, they can use it. 
Um, whereas if you were going through Caregivers Alberta or something like that, it would be even better. And so these values represent, in theory, the maximum price that Team CarePal can charge. Um, that's not quite correct because Team CarePal actually offers quite a lot of benefit that's not captured in this economic model. These are just quantitative uh, values that we can look at and, and kind of what I would consider the low hanging fruit that we can kind of get our hands on and understand and express in a monetary value. And so I would consider these to be underestimates of the, the true value of Team CarePal, uh, you know, to the health system, to the caregiver, to the employer. And as I was saying, you know, the model does not capture all the possible benefits of the app. Um, it, it's not meant to be an exhaustive review of potential outcomes. It's really just meant to be a review of the evidence that I can, that I think I can quantify and represent reasonably and, and is convincing to people. Um, it, it's not actually, uh, you know, an, an exhaustive list of the benefits of Team CarePal. The model is a working representation of Team CarePal's potential, and uh, it, it, in fact, very much is meant to be updated with new parameters and new effectiveness scenarios as data becomes available. And that's really part of the, the value of the app itself as well, is that Team CarePal can start accruing this information. It can be updated to, to get new types of data as we find that we might need it, and you know eventually can populate a model um, using its 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 correct real world data. And then again, I, I really encourage anybody who's interested to look at the full model, look at the uh, full presentation, and indeed, please contact Team CarePal or myself, uh, and, and I will be very happy to answer any questions you might have on this model, um, or, or even just discuss the, the model in general. Thank you.